Um, you, you worked with your dad, you worked with a lot of instructors here. How does your, does your teaching philosophy differ in how you structure your classes and how you approach students? I, th I think every instructor has their own I think every instructor has their own way of teaching. I think that uh, it's it's important to the school, uh, to our school in general, um, that all of our instructors have their own way of teaching. Um, my philosophy is a little bit different. My my, my jujitsu game, I, I don't want to say it's a little bit more relaxed, but but to some degree it is. Um, rather than I mean I you know technique is very important. I mean it's the most important part of the game, but but to me technique can be anything from uh, you know, a, a move from start to finish to just learning the body positioning along the way. Um, I think a lot of times people take the moves for, uh, you know, this move should work from start to finish. You know, if I set up a guard pass, I should set it up, tuck my elbow in, turn, put my leg over your leg, come around and take side control. And like it should work like that every time. It's not the truth. It's not going to work that way. You know what I mean? The other guy's going to come back. It's chess. It's not checkers. Um, so so what, what you really need to do is you need to take uh, and this is what I try to try to teach people is that you need to take what you're learning throughout that move. Um, you need to take, uh, you know, the elbow positioning, the hip positioning. You need to take all that and, and store that in the bank. And if you do that from several different moves, you should be able to transition from move to move. So I, I think my style just might differ a little bit because I base a lot of it on body positioning, even more than just uh, uh, such as the intricacies, the intricacies of the technique. Uh, I, I base it on body positioning a little bit more I think, than some others do. If intricacies work. Do you have any general thoughts on jujitsu? Any advice you want to give? I, I mean, as far as jujitsu goes, I love it. I mean, it's a great sport. I mean, I, I've trained in a lot of different martial arts, um, it, you know, at a young age. And uh, the thing I love about jujitsu is it's um, it's constantly challenging. Uh, there, there's there's always somebody better in this sport. There's always somebody better. And uh, you really have to get out there and find them and, and, and keep training. Uh, there's always something to learn in the sport. Every time you think you got to gauge on even one move, you know, uh, you get somebody like Professor Pedro Sire or my father that can come in and take your and take your basic armbar um, and, and 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 just make you feel like you you have never learned it before. You're at a brown belt level, and they make you feel like you know you you you're just starting out. Um, so I think. I think it's important to um, keep learning and keep training like that. Um, as far as uh, advice I would give, just go out there and have a good time. I mean, stay healthy. That's that's the hardest part of the sport. I mean, if you can stay healthy, you can become extremely talented. It's, but it's difficult to stay healthy. Um, you know, roll roll with everybody you can. Uh, roll with everybody that's within your limitations. Um, and and don't look at it as every time you roll, don't look at it like a competition. Learn when you roll. Get submitted. Submit somebody else. Who cares? Have fun. Smile about it.
smile so sweet Got a nice pair of shoes tied tight to her feet But even she can't fix her deeds today Cause even she knows blood don't wash away Even she knows blood don't wash away The fires can't burn down shoes away And the sleepers can't make her sleep all day And the fires below make everybody say Um, training wise and uh, in general this is a pretty rough week pretty tough week uh, Monday right out of the gate Jared pushed me through a pretty hard circuit Jared's a mastermind of the circuit he uh, he puts together some really grueling some really effective workouts and uh, this one he, he pushed me so hard and he's right in my ear so I don't ever want to stop uh, I pushed it hard I threw up I, I, I got off the mat before it happened so don't don't worry about that it's it's, it's all good but we're gonna try and get a, a circuit on tape. Hopefully I don't throw up for that one for episode three so you guys can kind of get a different different feel for uh, how Jared trains and how Jared conditions so that you guys can see the, all the different things we're doing to get me ready for this for this competition. Um, Master Elio Gracie passed away this week. That was that was pretty hard to deal with. Uh, I really admired him. He was a phenomenal phenomenal figure. I really wanted, wanted the chance to train under him. He was on my list of people I definitely wanted to meet before I died. He was up there with uh, Evan Tanner and Douglas Adams. So I, I'm going to stop putting people on that list, I think. Um, then after that, BJ Penn lost to George St. Pierre. It was a pretty pretty brutal fight. Uh, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you know this about me, how well you know me. Um, I'm kind of a, a little bit of a fan. I, I, I can't can't lie. Fans, fans probably not even the right word. I spent five months at the BJ Penn Academy in Hilo, Hawaii. And when I was there, the Penn family did a lot for me. They really took care of me, um, both in the gym and outside the gym. So, uh, you know, I, in a lot of ways, I feel like, you know, I was watching a, watching a friend in the cage there. So that's uh, kind of beyond the sport. And, you know, a lot of people are uh, talking, talking bad on BJ right now. And that's, that's something that's pretty hard for me to deal with because, you know, I'm, I've seen him in the gym. I've seen him on the beach. I've seen him just cruising. You know, I see what kind of person he is outside of fighting, and I know he's not any less of a fighter for having taken a loss. You know, it's like if if Santino went and took a loss. You know, somebody I really admire. This training, like you feel like you form form a bond. You know, I feel like Santino's my one of my, like my like my older brother. You know, if he goes and loses, it it doesn't it doesn't change who he is. It doesn't change how the people close to him view him. And I think uh, a lot of people get pretty fickle. In this sport, they they, don't, they forget just how tough it is to compete, and just how tough it is to put yourself out there in front of everybody, to to dare greatly, and that's um something I wish people remembered, in in everybody's case, both at BJ's level, down to the white belt level, stepping onto a local tournament where there's maybe four other guys. It's a hard thing to do, and people need to respect that more. The flower that grows and the flower that stops, the cradle too.